What's up, Poker Brandon here. This is gonna be a 5-5 session. No Limit Hold'em at the Park West Bicycle Casino. This was a weekday morning around 10.20 a.m. This is the first of 10 hands, and let's get into it. So two orbits go by, and everybody is just folding to the blinds, and everybody's chopping the pot. Maybe one guy will open a 20, and then everybody folds, and he wins. So I noticed everybody was pretty tight. I have played with a couple of these guys already previously, the previous days, so I have a feel for how some of them play, but not all of them. So anyway, I wanted to play, so I opened up the 6-5 offsuit on the button, and I went to a king-7 jack flop with two spades against the big blind, who checked it to me. And I make a mistake here, I think. I, I check back, and there's really no reason I should be checking back there as the aggressor pre-flop and opening with this silly hand 6-5 offsuit. I think I should always be playing my range there and betting, but I didn't. I chickened out. And then I decided to try to steal the pot now. So I bet $60 into about $60, hoping to just win this and I don't have to show my hand. But the big blind has some other plans in mind. He makes the call. He was somewhat of a, I guess not short stack, but medium stack. The buy-in for the 3,000, I mean the 5-5 five, five, no limit hold'em game is 300 to 1,000. And he had about 400, so he was somewhat of a short stack, I guess. And after this river ace comes, I just got like a little bit of hope after he checked that maybe I could still win this. And maybe he just called me with the jack and maybe I could push him off a jack. So I bet 150, it's about pot, a little less than pot now. And I'm hoping that this will just make him fold. But as I'm looking at him when he's thinking he tanks, I could just tell he has something he's not gonna fold. And then he slowly puts in a call. He puts in like a side call, like he feels like he's bad. I don't know what he's gonna call me with, but he does call. And I'm just gonna muck my hand because there's no way I want to show everybody at this table that I just played 6-5 offsuit this way. So when he calls, I just muck face down and I never see his hand and I bet he might have had like maybe a strong jack, like queen jack and I don't know, maybe I feel like queen jack might have called there. Definitely a king would have called. I'd be surprised if he called with like pocket fours there. That would be insane. But So I lose and I lose 240 in that hand and I rebuy up to $1,000. And now we're gonna get into hand number two. So in hand number two, I am on the button. I mean, I am on the big blind. The button opened to 20 folded to me and I make the call with pocket nines. I don't 3-bet because I know this player is capable of 4-betting and his range isn't knit, like he's not playing aces and kings only. So I know he's capable of 4-betting somewhat light and I just did not want to play a huge pot right away. So we go to a flop of 5-4-5, five, five. it's great for pocket 9s and then he bets 20. Feels like he would bet 20 with anything. And I think holding pocket nines here, I want to bump this pot up, so I raise it to about 3.5x. I think in the future, I would probably bet a little more here. I like the sizing if I want calls here from like over cards, like ace king, ace queen, king queen. But at the same time, it's going to be really tricky if an ace, a king, or a queen comes later and then I'm trying to play out of position versus the button because the only reason he's in the hand is because I raised him 3.5x. So I think I, I wanna raise that sizing up to about four to 4.5 next time when I check raise in the future. But I check it after the turn comes, which is a six, somewhat safe, and then he checks back. And when he checks back, I feel like his range is just capped at like ace high. I feel like maybe one pair like ace four and um, so when the river comes two of clubs obviously the flush gets there and ace three gets there 
And I just feel like I don't want to bloat this pot and have him raise me on the river and put me in a tough spot where I don't know if he has a flush or not. Because I know he is capable of bluffing. So I figure I'll just check this and if he bets, I'll call because I know he's capable of bluffing and hopefully I'm right. So he bets a pretty easy call sizing for pocket nines. He bets $95 into a $175 pot. So it's about like, what is that? Like not 33%. It's a little bit close to over half pot. I feel like that's okay to call here. I think he'd be bluffing a lot. And sure enough, I was right, he mucks. Probably had like an ace high, king high type hand. And maybe he just wanted to see what I would do on the turn in river or he just wanted to realize his equity if he put me on like an ace four or a single pair. So I win that and I'm happy to win that without having to go to a tough decision. So two hands later. Now keep in mind this table was super tight I guess. Like nobody was trying to three bet pre-flop. I don't think I've seen a single three bet pre-flop yet so everybody seemed to be very careful now on the button now i open a6 suited with 1160 dollars behind and i get a call from the big blind and the cutoff so we go to a flop three ways and the flop is jack with one club jack king five it's two hearts there it checks to me and now I'm a little more comfortable. I guess in the very beginning when I opened my first hand, I um, I didn't want to see bet that flop, which I don't know. I think I, I was just like nervous because it was my first hand in the morning. It was really quiet, like nobody was here. We were the only table running at this time. So I don't know. I think some outer uh, variables played a part in that not see betting previously but I see bet here to $60 and with that sizing I just wanted folds it's about 75% pot did not want to call there and I got it done so I win that with no problem 10:55 a.m. hand number four I have ace king suited in the no jack also under the gun so low jack makes the call to my left off camera and then button is gonna look down at his hand and wonder what he's gonna do <laughs> now for my sizing here for $20 as an open I like um, like 2x pot opens early position because if I get three bet I do want to play uh, the flop and I, I want to play those flops and I don't want to bet bigger in early position and then get three bet and have to play in flops with bigger pots in early position against players that have position so that's the reason for my sizing pre-flop so we go to a king 510 flop and i think that is just beautiful for ace king offsuit i was not holding a diamond but i gotta feel like i have the best hand here I feel like the player to my left and the button would both have three bet pocket tens. So I'm only really worried about pocket fives here. And button gets out of the way after my flop bet. Pot is 190. I'm in the pot with low jack, heads up. And the nine of hearts comes. So if he had queen jack, any suit, he got there. And just being in this hand and kind of looking at him in a way I felt like if he really had Queen Jack and while I have Ace King with this King board and he got there on the turn I think I'm just gonna have to pay him off but I gotta keep betting to get value from worse Kings I gotta get value from some kind of like Queen 10 maybe like King Jack um, single pair of hands and also both flush draws so i keep betting i bet 140 because i want to charge uh more money here more than half pot if he's on a draw and he makes the call pretty quickly 
which to me is not really strength. So River is a seven of diamonds. So when I see the seven of diamonds, the only new hand that really gets there is six, eight. So six, eight now it becomes a straight. Queen Jack was already a straight. So the straight draws don't really make sense to me. I feel like he would have raised Queen Jack on the turn. He might have raised Queen Jack on the flop even if he was because he was that type of player to bet uh, to raise his draws so when this river comes I'm really I, I am actually worried because I don't have a diamond that he might have gotten there he might have had a flush but at the same time I don't want to check and have him bluff and put me in a very tough decision if he bets like 500 because if he bets 500 after I check I'm gonna feel the need to fold I feel like it's harder to bluff if I put in a value bet so that's what I do. So I put in a value bet for 350 is what I think I remember. Yeah, I put in 350 and I'm just going to fold if he raises me. I feel like if he raises me here, it's going to be more leaning towards actual hands like Queen Jack or, uh, or flushes. So it's going to be easier to fold. But he doesn't, he folds, and if he folds there after I put out 350, I think he might have just had a single pair type hand. He might have had like queen 10 or maybe jack 10, maybe king queen if possibly. Uh, so I like that better. I like betting that river better than checking because I feel like when I check there, it looks so weak and it makes like players will pounce on that they will pounce they will recognize weakness they will recognize maybe i'm not good and then they put in an, a nice bluff sizing that makes it really hard for you to call and then you're stuck calling sometimes thinking you're you're becoming a hero but they actually have it and then you're losing more money so i like bet folding there very next hand okay very next hand low jack opens to 20 he's the player from the previous no, he's not the player from the previous hand. This is a different player. And then button three bets to $60. Now I see pocket kings. Now, side note for button, this player, when he sat down, he was pretty new. He was three betting a lot. So I would say once every orbit, he was three betting like this when a player opened a 20. So because his range is not super nitty, but I noticed he really liked to see flops. I felt like I should three bet, I should four bet this, but to a sizing that would uh, always get a call. So this is gonna be the first four bet that I put out. And I felt like it should be pretty strong. Like it should look pretty strong, the first four bet coming out. And I did not want folds here. I wanted to call. Uh, obviously, I think when you're holding kings, you should always want to play a flop. I don't think you should ever really be worried and hoping for folds pre-flop. So I put out, I believe, 190. So it's almost three, exactly 3x. Three it's about 2.5x the profit pot of $85 that I would win if I get, if everybody folds. So. I think that's somewhat okay. It's not too big, it's not too small. But being in early position, I do feel like this is a small bet here. I think in early position for bluffs, usually you wanna put out like 3x pot or 4x their bet because you really don't wanna play out of position. So I'm hoping that this, uh, this four bet sizing doesn't look too strong and maybe they just think i'm a rookie and i don't know what i'm doing by betting so small but i go heads up with the button after he calls we're about over a thousand dollars deep effective you can see he has 970 behind and this flop is 4 10 10 and i think that is absolutely beautiful when i'm holding pocket kings here i'm only losing to pocket aces which would have to be slow playing and I don't think he was the type of player to slow play pocket aces. Obviously, I'm losing to like ace 10 or king 10, queen 10, jack 10 if he had that and he three bet with that and now he's he got lucky. But if he got lucky and he hit those cards, 
Congratulations, I'm gonna pay you off here. I'm never gonna just assume you're that lucky and fold. I'm just gonna pay you off. I bet 25% hoping he will call with anything like ace, queen, any pocket pair above tens or even lower. But he snap folds. When he snap folds, I feel like he might have had like some kind of suited connector hand with no equity there. Like a hand like maybe, uh, maybe like 7-6 suited or 8-6 suited, eight, maybe even 8-9 suited. I don't know, something with like no equity, like 8-9 of spades where he just saw that flop and realized I have no equity. There's no point to, to call here. I'm really hoping he didn't fold like pocket jacks in that situation and my bet sizing just gave off extreme strength there. I'm really hoping that because then I gotta work on that. I gotta fix my sizing there if that's why he folded. Okay, well, now we move on to the next consecutive hand. Now keep in mind these last three hands were consecutive. They were played back to back. So low jack opens to 20, high jack calls, previous three better folded now actions on me in the small blind and I actually kind of laughed when I saw my hand I had, I got pocket tens and I just realized when I saw tens that I'm gonna have to three bet and I sort of smirked because I don't know if any player at the table saw me smirk but I smirked because I realized I'm gonna have to put in a three bet here and now everyone's gonna just think I'm being crazy now because three hands in a row I'm playing, I'm, I'm betting every street. I gotta look like somewhat, somewhat crazy. I think in the future, in this situation, when I have back-to-back -back hands where I'm three betting or four betting and, and putting money in the pot constantly as the aggressor, I think with a hand like pocket tens, even pocket jacks, pocket nines, next time I think I'm just gonna flat, even though that's really not the best thing to do at all in the small blind but the reason being is because this happens you know I get four bet to 240 by the low jack he only has about 600 behind hijack is gonna fold and now I'm in the position where it feels like he could be doing this with a hand like ace five eight I, like I swear I think this player can do this with like ace five suited eight nine suited and it's gonna suck folding. But when he puts out the four bet, he, what does he also have? He has aces, kings, queens, jacks, all hands, four hands where I'm just crushed. And then I gotta believe if he has ace, king suited, he's gonna call a jam if I jam. And then I'm flipping. So I just get put in a tough spot. I show the fold. And I show the fold on purpose because I don't want the table to think that I'm just being a maniac. I don't know what low jack had. I wish I was able to see a flop. And that's why next time I think in the situation when I'm getting back to back to back hands, I think I'm just going to flat. Because if I flatted there and I got to see a 10 on the flop, now I have more of an opportunity to win money. Whereas I'm three betting and now I'm getting four bet because my image is crazy. And I don't know if he's four betting because of my image or if he's four betting because he has a good hand. I guess in the future, if I had aces there, then yeah, I want a three bet because I do want to look crazy and I want the four bet. You get me? I think next time that's what it will happen. Anyway, 11.30 a.m. I get pocket aces in the hijack and we go four ways to a flop. Now, if you didn't notice, I just flatted pre-flop under the gun, the, th the three better, highest three better percentage on the table. He opened a 20, everybody called four ways. I just flatted. Then I checked that flop after the flop was three queen ace. I flopped top set. It checked all the way around to me on the turn too. So at this point, I think I want to put in a bet and build some money. I know this isn't the most GTO play here, but sometimes these slow plays with aces and kings and these these uh, absurd ways of playing hands, they get you paid more. So I'm hoping this almost pot sized bet here just looks like I'm trying to buy the pot and somebody's going to raise me. And sure enough, it happens under the gun. He's going to check raise after he checked the flop. 
Then he checked the turn as the aggressor, and now he's raising on the turn after I bet pot. He raises me to a small amount. I would say he's out of position and he doesn't even make it 3x. To me, this screams out strength. It screams out he does not want a fold. And honestly, at this point, even though he was the highest three better at the table, he was raising a lot. I feel like he has a big hand. Like what hands do you, are you the aggressor with? And then you check the flop and you check the turn. Pocket Queens is the only hand I'm thinking of. So I'm really thinking that he has a set too. I really think we have a set over set right now. And I'm feeling like, okay, so he might have a set of queens, which he's never folding. But then again, he could be check raising with a flush draw. There's two flush draws on board. There's hearts, there's clubs. He might have a combo draw with a flush and a straight draw. There's two ways he could have that. King Jack suited. So King, you know, hands like that. King Jack, King 10. They could be hearts or clubs. So I feel like if I just put in somewhat of a small raise here, he's going to be more inclined to jam with queens, which I would want 100% of the time, or he would just call the raise that I put out and try to chase his equity. So I sort of range him more on the uh, suited connector hand type range. And I re-raise him to 450. And I feel like that's a small raise to his 200 to let him put in another 250 to chase a draw. Obviously, I felt like he would have called or raised pocket queens or any set, but he instamux. So I think he was just taking a stab at it with just a hand with like nonsense, like eight, nine suited or something like that. And he just thought I was weak because I checked twice. But um, I wasn't weak. I mean, obviously I had the close to the nuts there. Super sneaky nuts there. Um, and I win and I'm fine with that. You know, I'll take it. At least I want something and it didn't just like limp around or it wasn't just a small pot. Anyway, a very a couple hands later, a couple minutes later, 11.37 AM, hand number eight. You didn't see that I got heads up in a pot with under the gun. Under the gun opened. He was not wild at all. He was playing pretty tight, pretty aggressive. He opened 20 pre-flop. I was the only one to make the call on the big blind with ace five offsuit. Then I checked it and he bet $40 on a 10, seven ace flop. I'm holding an ace and when he bets 40, I feel like it's just too big. I feel like he doesn't have an ace and he's just trying to buy the pot and play his range. So I feel like if I just raise this now, I raise it up to 140, a little more than 3x, I feel like he'll just fold, but he calls. And when he calls, I get some red flags because he was under the gun when he opened. So this may be a situation where I have ace five, I have a pair of aces, but he has ace king or ace queen. And now I would be completely crushed if that's the case. So after he called that, I'm a little bit cautious. I'm hoping we can just check this through and I check it. And then he bets out 210. Now, now I'm in a position where he either has ace king, ace queen, maybe ace 10, maybe a set of 10s, set of sevens. Well, uh, not quad sevens, so not quads. But he might have a set of 10s or ace king, ace queen. And he's just begging for a call. I mean, he's charging for equity, but he doesn't mind a call, I guess. And I'm just crushed. So it's either I'm crushed or he has a hand like king, queen of diamonds, king, jack of diamonds. And he realized that I might be weak now and he's pouncing on it, which would actually cre credit to you if that's the reason you're betting 210 with king, jack suited. It's a really good bet if he puts me on a weak ace and then he's betting 210 to get me to fold. I think I just have to give him credit and fold and say good bluff. And that is a good bluff if he if he has a hand like king jack suited, king queen suited, even like eight jack, uh, eight nine suited, maybe queen jack suited. All those hands that would just bet there to win it because he sensed weakness. It's a very good bluff. 
but I feel like he was not the player to do that more than he was the type of player to bet with ace king or ace queen there or ace 10. I feel like he felt like his hand was strong and he was gonna make sure to charge me money to see the next card and maybe he put me on a diamond draw I feel I felt like I got away from a from a somewhat of a cooler there obviously not a cooler but I felt like I got away from paying off more money to uh, another player with a better hand there that's what I think anyway a couple hands go by 11 56 a.m. now there's a no jack open to 20 he was somewhat of a quiet player, he wasn't too crazy, wasn't too aggressive, didn't like big pots. Button, the high percentage 3-better, three, 3 bets again to $65. And because his range is so wide here, against a, a player with a very tight range, I think I would just fold pocket 9s or set mine pocket 9s sometimes. But against this player on the button i think a call here is okay and i didn't mind going three ways to a flop if i was set mining so i call with intentions to set mine but also to trust my skill level playing post flop flop is eight six king i check it and he quickly bets out 75 dollars now from my experience uh when a player quickly bets out and the bet size is a little more than half pot i felt like it was just weakness with this guy uh, it felt like he wanted me to fold i feel like if he had an ace king type hand here he would want calls and he would bet just exactly half pot even less like 50 but he didn't he bet 75 so to me that bet sizing and the, the speed of his bet it just was not a king I can't tell you exactly why I, I, uh, I came up with that. Just based on looking at him and uh, staring at him and the way he said 75 and compared to all the ways he was playing, it just didn't feel that strong. I really got the sense he wanted to fold. So because I got that sense, I felt like pocket nines might be good here. And actually in this exact spot, I put him on ace queen. I targeted him right at ace queen, ace jack, maybe with spades but even not even with spades maybe just one spade so i see a turn i call pots 310 turn is a deuce very safe card obviously a club draw comes in it brings in another flush draw and then he bets 200 and again looking at him and the way he bet i just felt like this bet sizing compared to his previous bets it was too big to be strong it was, it was more on the I want a fold more so than I want a call. I feel like with this player in particular, he would have bet exactly around half pot, about 150, maybe 160, 175. Nah, not even like 175. He would have bet like 160, 150, maybe even like 140, 145, because I felt like he would want a call here. Especially with like a hand like pocket kings, I would feel like I didn't. I that was just the way he played to me. So when he put out 200, I really felt like this player may not have a king. He probably still has ace queen. So I make the call, and I'm hoping my calls are gonna also slow him down. You know, if he does have like no king, I'm just hoping he'll check, and I don't have to battle for it and make a tough decision. Then the river is a king of spades. So now I'm thinking, oh shit, if he had ace queen suited, meaning spades, and he got there, damn, that sucks. I'm also hope knowing, even though, even though I know calling his bluffs are good, like I wanna win, he could be bluffing with tens, jacks, queens, in which case I'm still bad. But I didn't get the sense he had those hands. I felt like he would have been more cautious with those hands. I don't think he would be betting. So I felt like the only hands he was betting was ace queen and ace jack. Then he checks the river and I show my nines and he gets angry and he bucks. And you should have seen him. He, he looked pretty frustrated. I don't want to say who he is, but he definitely tilted after this. He did not like that I called him down with nines here. Uh, and then he ended up 
you know, no offense if you're watching this, but it, you did end up punting away a lot of your money. And I know you knew that too. I know you took a break and you came back. We all do it. But yeah, I, you know, he did not like that I called him down there with pocket nines. And uh, I felt like my read was perfect. I think he had ace queen or ace jack and uh, I doubt he had pocket eights or lower. I guess it makes sense that he was, he was just bluffing with pocket eights or lower and I got him. But um, yeah, yeah, no. And I think when he, if he were to jam river there, I, I really felt like I was gonna call because when I looked at him, he looked very frustrated by that river. A lot of players don't think they give away tells. And uh, I'm, trust me, I'm looking at a lot of you guys when you play and lots of these players, they give away a lot. They give away a lot. And uh, I, I really think you guys should be covering up when you play, cover your mouth, cover your eyes. Anyway, moving on to the next hand, I have pocket aces on the button. I open to 35 after a straddle pot and a limper. And they all just flat, small blind, big blind, no jack, all flat. Uh, so flop is 10, nine, two. I feel like, you know, let me charge any straight draws or flush draws here. Let me just put out half pot, give them an easy call, but everybody folds and I'm gonna win. And uh, it's just gonna be an easy win pot here with aces. I'll take it. It's better than getting into a cooler and losing. So I go ahead and take that one down. My stack is about 2,200 and uh, we move into the final hand final hand of the session it's only been about two hours of gameplay but um definitely a, a nice session i feel we're gonna get a limper from a new player with 500 dollars. he just sat down about one orbit ago i feel maybe two orbits i see queen 10 and i noticed i was folding a lot so i want to open things up and i don't want a super tight image i open it up to 25 hoping to get position but i don't uh, button comes in makes the call big blind makes the call and then we get a limp raise limp raise to 115 from the no jack new player this elderly gentleman uh, He just gave he screamed out the vibes of limp raising aces or limp raising kings, so I just I think every player knew it when uh, he limp raised there and he did show aces to me He flashed them and he said, why don't I get action? But I mean, I don't think he realizes he's not getting action because he's folding a lot. And that's the only hand he opened. Anyway, I'm Poker Brandon. This was a 5-5 session. I was in for 1,240. I was out for $2,075. Thank you for watching.